Hi, we are Group 3 presenting RNA Targeting with CRISPR-Cas13, written by the Zhang Lab at MIT. The paper was published in 2017 and discusses a new CRISPR technology that targets RNA instead of DNA. I'm Leslie, and this is Rachel. And now we are ready to present. Okie doke. All right, so of course we should all be familiar with CRISPR, but just in case you're not, we thought we'd start with a quick refresher for the overall CRISPR mechanism. CRISPR stands for Clustered Regularly Interspaced Short Palindromic Repeats. CRISPR was repurposed from a natural defense mechanism in bacteria, and the most well-known technology is the CRISPR-Cas9 complex, which I'm sure you've heard of. Cas proteins are CRISPR-associated proteins. So the Cas9 protein will recognize a PAM site on a strand of target DNA. It'll cut both of those strands, creating a double strand break. And then once the DNA is cut, there are two possible repair mechanisms. Either it'll try to repair itself using non-homologous end joining, effectively deactivating that gene through the introduction of mutations, which is called knockout, or the break can be fixed with homology-directed repair, where a specific sequence of nucleotides can be inserted, which is called knock-in. So basically with knock out, we delete problematic genes and with knock in, we can insert whatever genes we want. Now we want to look at what CRISPR is capable of performing with RNA. Before this paper, molecular tools to manipulate and measure RNA were limited. And the primary tool for RNA manipulation was RNAi, otherwise known as RNA interference. RNA interferences are small pieces of RNA that can reduce protein translation by binding to the respective mRNA for that protein. This phenomenon of limiting protein translation and hence gene expression is called knockdown. Now, this paper introduces CRISPR-Cas13 as a new technology for knockdown. RNAi and Cas13 are comparable for knockdown efficiency. However, RNAi is prone to high off-target effects as opposed to Cas13, which has low off-target effects. These high off-target effects decrease the specificity of RNAi and can result in RNAi knockdown of non-targeted genes. With low off-target effects, CRISPR-Cas13 is significantly less likely to alter non-targeted genes. Also, catalytically inactive Cas13 is capable of in vivo transcript imaging, which shows the capabilities of Cas13 as a reprogrammable RNA binding protein. Here we have figure 2H from the paper. For context, Ala T is targeted with LWA Cas13A and SHRNA, which stands for short haired RNA. Short haired RNA is a type of RNAi used for knockdown of genes. From the figure, we can see that LWA Cas13A mediated targeting is much more successful than short hair RNA, RNA at decreasing normalized expression for all three mala T sites. Okay, so now to get into our paper. The paper aimed to find a Cas protein that could be engineered for mammalian cell RNA knockdown and binding. So the, research, the researchers screened 15 Cas13A orthologs using an extensive set of experiments to determine which ortholog would be the most catalytically active. Before screening could be done, the orthologs had to be cloned and purified. The only reason I mention that step is because the orthologs were purified by cloning their sequences into a PET-based expression vector that they received as a gift from our very own Dr. Finkelstein. He got a shout out in the paper, so we felt it was appropriate that he receive a shout out in our presentation, so shout out. Anyway, we believe the critical experiment from these ortholog tests was an ampicillin resistance bacterial assay shown in figures 1A and 1B. In figure 1A, we can see how the assay was performed. They expressed LWA Cas13A in an E. coli cell on a plasmid that also contained a beta-lactamase gene. The assay worked so that if LW Cas13A successfully targeted the beta-lactamase RNA, it would result in cell death on plates selected for ampicillin. They also repeated this experiment with a non-targeting vector, which is one that lacks a beta-lactamase complementary protospacer. So looking at 1B, what we want to see is very few surviving colonies with the targeting vector and a lot of surviving colonies with a non-targeting vector. That would tell us that not only is our protein catalytically active, but it's also very specific. And that's what we see with LWA. So basically they found that LWA was the most catalytically active and the most specific. 
we can see with LSH, which is right to the left of it, that it's somewhat specific, but it's not as active as, as LWA. And so the researchers chose LWA Cas13A as the protein to use for the rest of their experiments. So an interesting application presented in the paper for Cas13 is as a transcript imaging platform. DLWA Cas13A NF is a catalytically dead variant made by mutating catalytic arginine residues on LWA Cas13A. In the first column of the figure, we see DLWA Cas13A NF binds to two different ACT B guides and a NT non targeted guide. In the second column, we see the appearance of stress granules due to mRNA accumulation with the marker G3BP1 for all three guides. It was found that DLWA Cas13A and F targeted to ACT B guides localized more stress granules than the non target. This means that mRNA ac accumulation is mostly in the cytoplasm as opposed to the nucleus for the DLWA Cas13A NF targeted to the ACT B guides. And in the third column, with the DAPI binding to the nucleus, we see an overlay of the bound DLWA Cas13A NF guides to the appearance of and the appearance of stress granules. From this third column, we can also see that when DLWA Cas13A NF is bound to the ACT B guides, there is no blue and green overlap. So its location is not in the nucleus, meaning that DLWA Cas13A NF binds to RNA and translocates out of the nucleus and into the cytoplasm when targeted to ACT B guides. When DLWA NF binds to the non targeted guide, there is blue and green overlap, so this means it remains in the nucleus and does not translocate out of the cytoplasm. This capability of catalytically inactive LWA Cas13A binding targets and non-targets, non-target guides allows it to be used as a reprogrammable RNA binding protein. So here are some implications of this technology, with the first being RNA protein interactions. So to study this interaction, the process used in the in vivo cell imaging application could be used. Essentially, a dead catalytic variant of Cas13 would be made to bind to a sequence of RNA. The other implication of this technology is RNA base editing, which is currently being performed via the RNA editing for programmable A to I replacement, or repair for short. And this was developed by the Zang Lab. This method can change a single adenosine to inosine, which are read by the cell as guanine. So it's effectively changing an A to a G. They subsequently created RNA editing for specific C to U exchange, or rescue for short. These systems work by fusing an RNA adenosine deaminase called ADAR to Cas13, and then that complex can, add, uh, can edit specific bases. Okay, so in conclusion, LWA Cas13A can be reprogrammed to effectively knock down or bind transcripts in mammalian cells. The knockdown efficiency is comparable to RNAi, but with fewer off-target effects, making it much more specific. Inactivated LWA Cas13A can be used as a binding protein for live imaging and transcript, transcript tracking. These findings open the door for a range of transcriptome analysis tools and therapeutic approaches. The paper was cited 710 times, which shows that this technology is being used for a multitude of new applications like we talked about in the last slide. Hopefully we can get into more of these uh, in our subsequent presentations. Finally, we wanna give special thanks to Dr. Taylor for helping us with this presentation. We hope you all enjoyed it and thank you for your time.